Well, thank you very much. Uh, I, I hope to uh, be able to uh, uh, shine uh, a ray of light, uh, a ray of uh, sunshine uh, uh, into uh, this uh, uh, conference uh, uh, with the uh, presentation that I'm going to uh, uh, make. The uh, uh, topic is uh, essentially the content of the paper will consist of uh, looking at uh, growth, inequality, and uh, poverty in sub-Saharan Africa uh, in the last two decades, then uh, analyzing the uh, interrelationship linking growth, uh, inequality, and uh, poverty, and then trying to see what are the distinct uh, features of uh, inclusive growth that are missing presently in uh, sub-Saharan Africa, uh, and what uh, might be called uh, upon to reduce inequality and uh, creating uh, jobs. Uh, then uh, a short section on the uh, structural transformation and looking specifically as to whether the present a structural transformation uh, has become relatively uh, more effective uh, in creating inclusive growth uh, in uh, sub-Saharan uh, Africa. And then finally, I will uh, try to link the structural transformation to the, the whole issue of uh, the uh, rural urban migration and uh, uh, job creation. Uh, Jeff yesterday said that you really shouldn't give the bottom line until the end of your presentation, but uh, I have enough experience to know that it's a good idea to uh, give your main messages at the uh, outset just in case uh, you run out of time. So what are my uh, main messages? The, the first one is that uh, in sub-Saharan Africa, there has been a quantum, and I'm not using this word lightly, a quantum jump in uh, aggregate growth, uh, a significant reduction in absolute poverty. I'm talking about the period from 2000 to uh, the present. Uh, a very high and persistent uh, level of income inequality, and this I think is uh, a, uh, a very, very serious problem uh, for Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, also, that the uh, achievement of a successful uh, inclusive growth will require um, a reduction in uh, uh, inequality and a smoother structural transformation. Um, and one thing that, uh, in fact, is based on uh, a paper that I did recently for UNU Wider was to look at the present structural transformation, in other words, since the year 2000, uh, which corresponds to this uh, growth spell, and uh, a tentative conclusion based on a number of countries is that uh, this structural transformation has become uh, more effective in uh, uh, Africa. And finally, uh, um, and I don't think this is necessarily inconsistent with the uh, presentation uh, that Peter just made, uh, small-scale agriculture still has to pay, play a, uh, a key role as the uh, engine of growth. It's in many of these very uh, poor African countries, it's the uh, only game uh, in, uh, in town. <clears throat> uh, then uh, the final message is that the uh, rural urban migration can be uh, facilitated and ultimately uh, act as a lubricant through uh, the improvement of uh, uh, relevant rural education and uh, uh, infrastructure. So let's look at uh, the, the growth pictures. Um, 
Uh, economists typically look at per capita GDP and the uh, growth rate in uh, constant dollars uh, has gone from uh, 0% between 1960 and 2000, the annual growth rate, to between uh, 2.5% and 3% in the uh, last uh, decade. Um, now, if you look at specific cases, uh, Angola went from minus 2% in the previous decade to an almost incredible 10.4% in this decade. Ethiopia from minus 0.5 to 7%. Nigeria from practically 0% to 4%. Tanzania from about 0% to 5%, and so on. So out of the sample of uh, 37 uh, sub-Saharan African countries for which uh, we had data, uh, and incidentally, the data that I'm presenting are based on the POV CalNet World Bank data set, which is the, the most uh, inclusive uh, we have, the most comprehensive we have. Out of these 32 countries, uh, 37 countries, 32 countries uh, had a higher growth rate, uh, three countries essentially the same, and only two countries uh, uh, stagnated, went from uh, a higher to a uh, lower growth rate. Now, a very important uh, caveat that I have to make at the outset is that the quality of the data, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa, is, is really questionable. The, the data that the World Bank uses are based on the information provided by the national statistical offices of these countries, and the World Bank only does a minimum amount of quality control. So the, yeah, all of the data that are going to be presented are subject to a significant margin of error. But even if you take into account this margin of error, uh, the <coughs> conclusion that I'm reaching is that there has been a really significant uh, quantum jump in uh, growth. Um, now, uh, in, the, in the paper, I gave a number of uh, uh, graphs. And here you can see that right around, uh, this is for the poorest countries, right around 2000, you have this turnaround. And uh, uh, you, you have the beginning of uh, what appears to be a growth uh, spell. Now, what about poverty? Uh, the incidence of poverty uh, in the last uh, decade, if you take the headcount ratio, went from something like 58% to 49%. It fell in 27 countries, remained the same in about seven countries, increased in only three countries. Again, there were some spect spectacular uh, declines, uh, such as Burkina Faso, Ethiopia, from 55% to 31%, uh, Uganda from 61 to uh, 34%. Uh, so uh, in terms of poverty, I think uh, the uh, uh, tentative conclusion would be significant decline in uh, poverty. What about inequality? Still very high income inequality, little evidence that it is uh, falling. Uh, and out of the 26 countries for which we had observations over time, I found about the same number of countries in which the incidence of inequality had uh, risen as had uh, fallen. Uh, there are still some extremely uh, worrisome cases. <clears throat> South Africa would be the prime example. The Gini coefficient uh, in South Africa uh, is of the order of 0.63. Now, in order to understand the uh, structure of economic growth, the pattern of growth, one has to look at the interrelationship that links growth, inequality, and uh, uh, poverty. And the first thing I'd like to do is to uh, uh, look at uh, how 
globalization and later on uh, an appropriate development strategy can affect uh, uh, poverty. So uh, let's start with uh, globalization. Uh, the, here, uh, globalization uh, has an impact through increasing openness through trade, capital, uh, labor movement, technology, knowledge. And of course, this greater openness will have an impact on uh, growth, on economic growth, but it will also have an impact on inequality. And at one time, it was thought that uh, uh, economic uh, growth, particularly economic growth that was fueled uh, by uh, the forces of globalization would tend to lead to more inequality. Um, again, uh, one does not necessarily observe this in Africa. As I said, inequality is very high, but it's not clear that uh, globalization has necessarily worsened uh, this high uh, inequality. Now, the, the link between growth and distribution, uh, economists are very uh, uh, well aware of uh, Kuznet's law that essentially said that uh, as growth occurs at an early level of development, it's going to lead to more inequality before um, the uh, 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 inequality starts falling. That has been pretty much dethroned on the basis of uh, uh, the evidence of the last uh, two decades or so. The uh, link between inequality and growth is a very crucial link, and here there are two schools of thought. One school of thought, which is the old uh, classical economist school of thought, uh, maintained that you need an uneven distribution of income in order to generate the higher savings that are needed for investment that is needed for growth. And since the rich save a higher proportion of their income than the poor, this was based on this uh, idea. On the other hand, uh, what I would call the uh, uh, modern uh, uh, political economy of development, uh, uh, maintains that, on the contrary, uh, a high level of inequality through a number of pathways, uh, particularly by generating greater social conflicts, political conflicts, uh, is going to retard uh, future growth. Now, uh, another link is from growth to poverty. Of course, growth is a necessary condition to reduce uh, uh, poverty, but it is not a sufficient condition. And uh, typically distribution, an un uneven income distribution, is going to act as a filter uh, between growth and uh, distribution. So here you have the same uh, graph, but uh, uh, with a development strategy added on to it. Uh, countries can at least to some extent, uh, endogenously have some impact on alleviating somewhat the negative consequences of globalization and enhancing some of the uh, positive uh, impact. So uh, just to give a quick example in terms of the structure of uh, growth, uh, you could contrast the effect of uh, uh, Kenyan horticultural exports with that of uh, uh, Nigerian oil exports. In one case, you have a commodity that is quite labor intensive that is going to uh, create uh, income jobs and incomes for the uh, very poor, uh, the unskilled, uh, and uh, essentially, hopefully contribute to poverty reduction directly and uh, uh, also uh, a reduction in inequality. Nigerian oil exports, highly capital intensive, no evidence uh, that uh, uh, this is going to uh, lead to uh, any significant employment effects, uh, uh, and if anything, uh, is likely to lead to uh, greater uh, inequality. Um, the uh, 
uh, within the uh, setting of uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, this growth inequality poverty nexus uh, has been uh, analyzed by uh, Fosu, among others, and the major findings is that income growth was the, the main engine of uh, poverty reduction, uh, yet that in many countries, inequality, high inequality, acted as a uh, major constraint to uh, uh, poverty reduction. Now, within the development community, uh, different concepts are in vogue at different times. And for somebody as old as I am, I've seen uh, the definition of development go essentially from uh, simply an increase in uh, G GDP uh, to uh, uh, basic needs. And presently, the uh, uh, conception, which is very much in vogue, is that of uh, inclusive uh, growth. Um, the African Development Bank defines inclusive growth as economic growth that results in a wider access to sustainable socioeconomic opportunities for a broad number of uh, people, uh, regions, uh, all done in an environment of fairness, equal justice, and political plurality. So the idea here is that the uh, growth be very broad-based and uh, uh, affect uh, all of the different uh, segments of the uh, uh, popu uh, population. So within the context of uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, what are the, the most crucial features of uh, inclusive uh, growth? And I would claim reduction in uh, inequality, creation of stable uh, jobs, and a success, successful structural uh, transformation. Now, with regard to the creation of uh, stable jobs, uh, yesterday, uh, Barbara was a little bit pessimistic about uh, uh, the, uh, the fact that at least in some of the African countries, there might be some evidence of increasing fertility rates. Um, I've looked at the recent evidence, and uh, um, I think the, the most important work here is the uh, McKinsey uh, uh, Global uh, Institute work that is based on uh, bringing together something like 20 scholars. And what they feel is that uh, uh, the uh, African subcontinent is just about to benefit from a demographic uh, dividend. In fact, the, uh, in about uh, 20 years, they will have the uh, highest, the largest workforce in the world, but also the lowest dependency ratio, which is, I think, an important point to, uh, to note. Um, okay, uh, the, now let me move to the uh, structural transformation. And uh, uh, first of all, for those of you who are not familiar with the concept, the structural transformation looks at the extent to which the uh, labor force uh, in agriculture, which is very high at an early stage of development, uh, is able to move out of agriculture into non-agriculture. Uh, and also the extent to which the share of agricultural GDP out of total GDP declines uh, over time. And uh, I'm focusing here on uh, two groups of countries, the uh, coastal resource scarce country and the landlocked uh, resource uh, scarce countries. And what we see is that before 2000, the uh, Asian countries, most of the Asian countries had a very successful uh, structural transformation, but uh, Africa had a, essentially a flawed uh, structural uh, transformation in the sense that uh, agricultural workers were being pushed out of agriculture, but could not find more productive jobs outside of uh, agriculture. So it was essentially what has been called the migration of uh, 
uh, misery. Let's look at Asia. You see, these are countries. This is the, the normal transformation here. Um, on uh, this axis, you have the share of agriculture and the labor force. Here you have uh, GDP per capita in log form. And you see that that transformation is, follows essentially what is called the normal pattern. The, the past structural uh, transformation essentially meant that workers moving out of agriculture could not get more productive jobs outside of agriculture, which meant that you had this kind of a vertical drop. Uh, in the more recent structural transformation since 2000, there is some evidence, and, and this is quite tentative, but there is some evidence that the structural transformation in something like uh, 12 out of the 14 countries for which I could get data uh, is more uh, normal uh, in the sense that the workers that are moving out of agriculture are able to find uh, more productive jobs out uh, of uh, uh, agriculture. Now, um, the, uh, uh, a couple of things in the two minutes that I have left. Uh, one key question is how can the structural uh, transformation be accelerated, be facilitated, and act as a lubricant in the uh, rural urban migration. And here I think that uh, there are two interventions that uh, 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 are called for. One is infrastructure, particularly uh, rural roads, uh, uh, public works programs. Uh, and the uh, uh, other one is uh, uh, integrated rural development and uh, uh, rural education. So my conclusions, um, it's uh, premature to state that the uh, present growth spell in sub-Saharan Africa signals the beginning of an African renaissance, but it could happen. And one of the things that is missing from my uh, presentation and that I want to add uh, is to look at the impact of this growth spell on uh, human development. And just before coming here this morning, I uh, looked at the uh, human development report, the last human development report, uh, that has a human development index that is based more than on just uh, per capita income. And for Sub-Saharan Africa, this is 2013, this is a conclusion. The average uh, HDI value, this is the index value, uh, of 0 0.47 is the lowest of any region. But the pace of improvement is rising. Between 2000 and 2012, the region registered average annual growth of 1.34% in HDI value, placing it second only to South Asia with uh, Sierra Leone and Ethiopia achieving the fastest uh, HDI growth in the, in the world. So again, this is very tentative, but uh, the one thing that I want to add to this paper is an attempt to see the extent to which the high growth spell has been able to lead to reasonably uh, successful uh, improvements <laughs> in uh, human development. 